Hi, Frank Spanos from Empire Surgical. And today I'm going to talk to you about ACL reconstruction using a transtibial approach and a BTB autograft. BTB meaning bone tendon bone. The first thing the doctor is going to do is harvest and prepare the graft. The graft can either be an autograft or an allograft. The allograft being coming from a cadaver and an autograft being coming from the patient. The doc would first start by inserting his scope and probe into the lateral and medial portals of the knee and perform his knee joint diagnostic. From there, the doc uses his shaver, wand, and burr to perform a synovectomy and notchplasty and removal of the torn ACL. From there, he would take his tibial guide and set it to 55 degrees, and you would place it on your tibial plateau and insert the bullet to lock the tibial guide into place. It's important that the the knee is set at 90 degrees because your when dribbing when drilling your tibial tunnel it the angle creates the angle for the femoral tunnel being that when doing a transtibial approach the femoral tunnel is dependent on your your tibial tunnel. So now that, now that that being said, you're going to take your short um, beef pin and drill your tibial tunnel. You're going to remove your tibial guide and leave the short beef pin in. Now over the short beef pin, you're going to take your fully fluted reamer and drill your tibial tunnel. You're going to use your fully fluted reamer on the tibial side because it's a longer distance and like I said the tibial guide, the, the tibial, tibial side must be straight being that the, the femoral tunnel is dependent on the tibial. So your fully fluted reamer is going to have the same diameter from start to finish and make it easier so that your tunnel is straight and on the correct angle. You would then remove your reamer and beef pin and insert your tibial knee cannula to prevent the fluid from running out of your knee. You would then take your offset aimer and place it on your femoral condyle. After that, the doctor would take his long beef pin and drill all the way through until it comes out the lateral side of your thigh. After that, he would take his acorn reamer and drill to the length of the bone plug plus five millimeters five millimeters and it's important that they're using the correct measurements because you need a back wall of at least two millimeters on the femoral side. Now we're going to use the acorn reamer on the femoral side being that it's not as far as a distance to drill and it's easier to get through the joint space being that the 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 diameter of the acorn reamer is not the same, but the tip is the diameter that we do need. You're then going to remove your reamer, the acorn reamer, and your femoral aimer, and load your graft onto the long beef pin. And you're going to load the graft onto the beef pin by putting the sutures that are in the bone of the graft through the eyelet of the beef pin. From there we can use a pin puller to pull the beef pin through through the through the leg and pull the graft into its prop into the tunnels. 
you would then use a flexible guide wire to aim the femoral screw and fixate the screw. Once the femoral screw is in place, you can cycle the graft from 0 to 90 degrees so that you have the right flexion and tension for the knee. With tension on the graft, you would uh, place the knee in extension and use the guide wire to aim the screw for the tibial side and fixate your tibial screw. And you would then close your incisions and the case is closed. This has been the ACL reconstruction using a transtibial approach and a BTB autograft. Thank you.